And hello everyone, Peter here once again with another real-time video for you, back by popular demand, of course. Um, you know, let's just uh, hop right into it. First of all, though, I will hit you, uh, you know, well, some good news and some bad news. Um, personally, I'll hit you with the good news first. Uh, we've got a whole hour of content here, and uh, I'm drawing slowly, and you can see every... Well, almost every pen stroke and I'm you know and you can just uh, you know listen to my voice talk about close to nothing and uh, yeah and that kind of leads me into the bad news the bad news is that when I edited this video um, I, when I sat down to draw this I was drawing for about an hour and a half and there's only about an hour of drawing and so I edited out the half hour during which I wasn't drawing, um, that half hour during which I was doing um, other assorted things. And, uh, well, hopefully I edited it out. See, the thing was that I edited it, edited, edited it for the four-minute version of this, which really sped up. And so I was a little, I was a little sloppy with the editing. So sometimes you might miss... Um, you'll probably see normally when I make these real-time videos you don't see the cuts at all like I just I cut it after my hand leaves the frame and then I cut it again before my hand comes back into the frame this it's a little sloppier and you might miss like the ends of some lines or something but 99% of it is there and uh, no real cause for alarm I assure you uh, but yeah if anyone asks you personally when it comes down to it you know, I've got good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? I think personally you should say, I'll take the good news first. Um, because you get the good news, and then you get the bad news. And uh, you, then while you're listening to the bad news, you're riding, riding that high from the good news. And then after listening to the bad news, you can always say, well, at least we've got that good news. Um if you take the bad news first, then you're listening to the good news with the sour taste of the bad news in your mouth, and you're going to have to go back and think about the bad news after you hear the good news. Um, my way, you hear the good news um, mostly unadulterated, with only, you know, like, you just know in the back of your head that you're about to listen to some bad news shortly thereafter. Anyways, that's just my take on it. Um, before I made this video, in a recent video, in the in the sped up, in the unreal time version of this one, I, I commented, I made a, a tiny request that maybe you guys could um, give me a few talking points. And uh, you guys gave me so many talking points, like a lifetime's worth of talking points. And, you know, you guys can go ahead and continue to do that. I, I said I wanted, like, unimportant things because uh, this channel is mostly about drawing, so I don't really want to talk about important things. Those kind of things stress me out and I try not to think about them too much, so I like talking about things that aren't too important, like, you know, like I mentioned before, how to tie your shoes, or some something someone mentioned here is, you know, actually a couple people mentioned it, was, um, Peter, what's your favorite, uh, you know, like, sleeping position? I think personally, uh, well, obviously, I can only sleep from... I can only, well, sleep, yes, but speak from personal experience here. Uh, but for some reason, I, when I go to sleep, or at least attempt to go to sleep in my recent, in the recent few years, um, I kind of try to sleep like a mummy. Um, I kind of, I lie down on my back. I put one or two pillows, lately two pillows. They're not extremely puffy. I put these pillows under the back of my head, and I either... Uh, I've, I've usually got some music going either on my, on a speaker in my room or on in some earbuds. And I just kind of lie there with my hands by my side, my legs straight out, um, ex ex just extended straight parallel to each other. And I've got my hands by my side or maybe clasped, um, on my belly. Or sometimes I even try crossing my arms on my chest, which is extremely comfortable. Um, one thing that is a little bit uncomfortable or frustrating when it comes to sleeping is that some of my most, some of, I guess one of the things about life is that 
as you go through life, you're experimenting with sleeping in different sleeping positions, you know, to find out what the most comfortable one is or ones, you know, you, you move around during the night. But some of the most comfortable sleeping positions I've found in my whole life are ones that don't work for me simply because sometimes, like, uh, at random times, some limbs, some of my limbs will fall asleep and then I'll wake up later and have like a, like a dead arm, as it were. And strangely enough, uh, this, this mummy position, when I have my arms kind of crossed on my chest, um, I don't know if it's just like some weird physiological thing, you know, like for some re first of all, I don't know what makes a person's, you know, arm or leg fall asleep. I don't know why that happens or, you know, something about like nerves or maybe blood flow. Um, maybe I think if I was, if I was going to make an uneducated guess about why arms fall asleep, I hope you're all, I hope you all know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like your arm falling asleep when it gets all numb and tingly and you can't feel anything. And, um, anyways, what I think is happening there, this is just my, it's just a wild, just a wild guess. Um, I think that, uh, maybe blood, there isn't enough blood getting to some part of your arm or something due to just like the way your arm is sitting, like some blood vessels are getting pinched and, uh, by like a piece of clothing or, uh, I don't know. It's, you know, life is weird, of course. And, uh, maybe, so maybe there's not enough blood flow to something and, uh, your brain realizes this and before your arm completely dies and rots and falls off, um, maybe your brain starts sending these weird, uh, you know, I guess you're, I'm kind of losing it here. My theory is falling apart as I, as I try to form it. Um, so your, I guess your arm, you lose sensation just because there's not blood there supplying the nerves. Uh-huh. That makes sense. And then, and then it starts tingling because your brain realizes this is happening. So it sends you tingling sensations, which wakes you up after you're already asleep, soundly asleep, very comfortably, I might add. And then you wake up and you've got this whole arm completely lifeless. And, uh, you know, you, you, at first you don't really know what's wrong and you try to turn over, excuse me, you try to turn over and it's like this big dead snake that gets wrapped around you and you can't figure out why you can't turn over. And it's like, and arms are incredibly heavy and you can, when they can't use their own muscles to move and you use the other arm to like drag it around and you hope you're not like dislocating it or something and it's all very disconcerting it's a disconcerting thing to have thrust upon you in the middle of the night this 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 huge fleshy appendage hanging from your shoulder that used to that you used to be able to control and you know play tennis with uh i mean i haven't played tennis since i was like six but you know it used to be useful and now it's just nothing it's just dead weight and uh Eventually you, you, you know, you put it in, into a position which you hope is now, you know, blood can flow into it. Anyways, so I usually start out with this weird mummy position just because it seems simple and I like simple things in a lot of areas in my life. And I feel like if I can get to the point where I can just sleep on my back with my arms and legs straight out and my head straight back, um, and I can sleep like that. And ideally, I would like to never move the whole night, although I think I usually do, although there have been some nights where I wake up exactly in that same position and I feel a tiny sense of accomplishment when that happens. But most nights I, I rise and turn a little bit, um, not, not of my own accord. I guess that kind of happens subconsciously or in my sleep or kind of like sleepwalking, but sleep tossing and turning. That's fairly common, I think. Anyways, I think that if I could... You know, if, I feel like it would be a neat, a neat talent to be able to have to just be able to lie flat and straight like that and sleep and never move. I feel like I'd be able to sleep in a lot of, uh, a lot of places. Like I could sleep like up on a narrow wall somewhere all night and not worry about rolling or moving off or, uh, it, it would be better for camping, you know, in tight spaces. It'd be better for sleeping on benches and couches, um, 
you know, I don't do these things very often. Um, I usually sleep in my bed, but I feel like it just, um, it's just a good, it would be a good thing to learn how to do, to sleep and not move around a lot. In, in, in past stages in my life, I, I did a lot of like very splayed out spread eagle sleeping, you know, and which is kind of ironic because now I have a bigger bed than I ever had before. I have a king size bed right now, which is basically a huge square. And for most of my life, you know, growing up, I had like a little twin sized and I made full use of that thing. Uh, but, um, lots of times I turn over on my side. I do the side sleeping position, uh, you know, on my shoulder. I, I, I hope everyone knows. I'm, I'm assuming there's only, there's like, you know, a finite number of sleeping positions and a lot of people use the same ones. You know, I sleep on my side with kind of both of my legs bent together, kind of the recovery position. Um, the one thing I don't like about that is, well, ever since, well, to put it bluntly, sometimes I drool and that's, that's the position where I drool the most. So if I'm going to avoid a position for you know, to try not to drool, that's probably the one I try to avoid. Um, but, um, I guess it's so comfortable sometimes I sleep that way anyways. And I've kind of, I've kind of realized that I can angle my head in a certain way that I don't really drool at all most of the time, but sometimes things happen during the night and, uh, I'm sure it happens. I haven't noticed a lot of drool lately, so that's another, another feather in my cap, if you will. Um, I guess I don't sleep on my stomach much anymore, mostly just if I'm just falling asleep or just lying in bed, you know, with uh, kind of in like an army crawl position, like if I'm crawling under barbed wire on my stomach with one leg straight out and one kind of hooked to the side. Um, that's a pretty fun position, but I don't think I do a lot of actual sleeping uh, like that. Um, yeah, so I think that might might be all I have to say about sleeping positions, but I do enjoy sleeping quite a bit these days lately, um, to not, in, in an effort to not try to sleep my entire life away, which I think is entirely possible for me, um, cause I do enjoy it. Um, since I don't have like a certain bedtime and, or time I need to be awake for almost anything, um, whenever I go to bed, I just like set my alarm no, I don't set my alarm. I set my timer for just eight and a half hours, and then I then I go to sleep. So I figure eight and a half hours is a good amount of sleep for anybody. Um, I guess I could get nine or nine and a half, or if if I don't set if I don't set a timer, sometimes I sleep for five or six hours, or sometimes I sleep for sixteen hours. It can get out of hand really quickly, and uh, so I feel like eight and a half hours uh, it's a happy medium right there. So, you know, whenever I go to bed, whether it's at, you know, 9, a, 9 p.m. or, you know, 5 a.m., I just try to sleep for a solid 8.5. 8 uh, let's see, switching gears here. A great question someone asked is, this is a, just a classic, a classic question here that I really appreciate, is uh, orange juice, pulp or no pulp? Now, this was a source of great contention in my family growing up. My mother um, served a lot of orange juice um, for breakfast growing up, you know, uh, and I really enjoy pulp. Like, if, like in that carton, if it says pulp, that's good. If it says extra pulp, that's even better. And if it says, you know, only pulp, you know, like if it says oranges with a little bit of like if it's just like barely drinkable oranges, I'm all over that. I love pulp. I, uh, as if it, if I can gulp it down, I'm all, it's amazing. Okay. But the rest of my family, uh, liked orange juice without pulp, but thankfully, uh, my mother loved me. And so since there are four people in my family, uh, me and my sister and my mom and my dad, I guess she seemed, I guess it was pretty fair that about I think I felt like about a quarter of the time, uh, my mom would buy pulpy orange juice. So like every fourth carton, maybe, or every fourth time she went to the grocery store, she would get it with pulp. Um, and I don't, I don't think the rest of my family hated pulp. It's just they maybe preferred it without pulp. Um, but I loved pulp and I didn't really love orange juice without it. 
it seemed for me it seemed like such a weird acidic unrefreshing beverage to have first day in the morning without pulp but with pulp it turned into something else entirely so yes pulp please in my orange juice fresh squeezed is good there's usually a lot of pulp in fresh squeezed orange juice but i didn't have that very often in my life um this person says um <laughs> Unimportant question. If you were, this, <laughs> I don't know if this is an unimportant question or just a nonsensical question. If you were macaroni and cheese, how many horses would be running, would be, let me start over. If you were macaroni and cheese, how many horses would be running through the Serengeti at night in the fall? Well, this brings to mind, uh, the mention of the Serengeti, of course, makes me think of that song, Africa, by Toto, because they mention the Serengeti in that song. It's a great song. Definitely before my time, but I still like that song. And macaroni and cheese, um, I love that stuff, you know? I Occasionally my mom would make, like, actual macaroni and cheese when I was growing up, uh, but most of the, you know, like, where you actually, like, boiled, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, between like actual macaroni and cheese where it's like, and then like the craft instant, there's definitely a difference. But I think personally, I almost like the instant stuff, you know, uh, it's not that instant actually, cause you still have to like boil it and stuff to make it. It's not like you can just snap your fingers, uh, you know, contrary to what the name would suggest. But, uh, I always liked it when, uh, my dad would put cut up and put, uh, hot dog slices in it. I was, I was a big fan of that. Sometimes I was a little grossed out, though, when my dad and my mom, I think, they enjoyed, when we had macaroni and cheese hot dog slices in it, they enjoyed also putting salsa in it, which uh, was fairly disgusting to me. And uh, so I let them keep the salsa on their side of the table, and uh, I just, uh, you know, went straight, straight with the macaroni and cheese hot dog slices, just plain. I drank also... That I can't imagine having that meal without a glass of milk. I drank so much milk when I was little. I probably had at least two tall glasses of milk with every meal. And there was always, always milk in the fridge growing up. Several gallons. Not just for cereal, just for drinking. Excuse me, all the time. Uh, I don't know. It was just amazing. I probably didn't stop drinking milk every day until I was like 20-something. Um, or maybe, yeah, probably, I don't know, just all the time. And that was just like me and my sister drinking milk. Cause I think my mom and dad were like, I think they probably drank milk when they were younger, but then they became, as they grew into adulthood, some years before I was born, probably they became lactose intolerant. I guess that's something that can happen over time as you grow up, but I don't think I'm like, I'm. I'm 100% sure I'm not lactose. Actually, I could have just turned lactose intolerant yesterday because I haven't had milk in a in a minute. So I could be lactose intolerant right now for all I know, but I hope not because I still enjoy I still enjoy milk. Um, this person wants me to talk about the importance that is orange pop. Well, I have you know that here in in my area we call it orange soda. Okay, and it is important. That's why I've got a, a fridge half full of it. Um, this person wants me to know wants to know what are the two fillings of sandwiches that alone would make a great sandwich, but if mixed together would spoil it. Well, first of all, in my life. Um, my mom, uh, let me just say this, bananas. I've had some good banana sandwiches. And the only banana sandwiches I've ever had in my whole life were the ones my mom made me, right? You take a piece of bread, slather some mayonnaise on each piece of bread. You slice some, you take a banana, peel it, slice it in half, and then you slice, you know, slice it in half like... 
there's different halves, I guess. In half, you know, short ways, and then in half, like, down the middle. You guys know what I mean? So pretty much quarter the banana. Cut it in half both ways. And on two different axes is what I'm saying. So you have, like, banana slices almost. Anyway, so that banana... I have, I've had good banana sandwiches. And now that you... And I don't think I've had one since. My mom made me those when I was younger. But I think if you added bananas to almost any other sandwich, it could get pretty gross pretty fast. Um... Also, my dad used to put horseradish on almost everything, and I thought that was disgusting. But now I kind of like horseradish a lot. I guess people change over time. People can change, okay? Sometimes you don't like horseradish, and then one day you do. Um, there's a lot of good questions here. What would the best superpower be? You know, I don't know about the best superpower. Um, the thing about superpowers is typically there's always like some... You know, at least in comic books, there's always like some weird, uh, there's always like some weird catch or weakness, you know, built in, you know, like, like the quintessential superhero, Superman, who'd be like a, the, he would be, that would be the best superpower if only kryptonite didn't exist. So I would take that, those superpowers and, uh, and just be happy that, uh, kryptonite isn't a real thing. And then I would be invincible, right? Unless the sun went out. Okay, so he recharges in the sunlight. If the sun went out, would he not need to reach... Would he have to fly to a different solar system to recharge? Or does he even have to recharge? Is he really invincible if he does need to recharge? What if he doesn't recharge? Does he stop being invincible or he just get weaker? I don't know how this stuff works. I obviously, I obviously need to watch more and read more comics. I'm a terrible person for not for not knowing this stuff. But it's good to this person says you need to talk about suits and buttons. Um well I think you button the top one and not the bottom one. That's what I've heard. That's the way to do it. Uh this person says, How much are toilet seats in Japan? I think they're pretty much just the standard uh the standard rate. Just uh each toilet seat costs as much as as one toilet seat costs, except there's probably certain places that charge a little too much. I wouldn't buy them from there. And there's probably other places that charge um, a l quite a bit less, and I wouldn't buy them from there because you're probably getting a pretty crappy toilet seat. Uh, no pun intended, because if there's actually crap on it already, definitely don't buy it. But, you know, a toilet seat is a good thing to spend your money on because you don't want to you don't want to like be rushing to the toilet and sit down on it too heavy and have the toilet seat snap underneath you. That's a bad experience. Um, this person says, and the same person says, and how important and more important, how to find a toilet in a foreign country or new space. Uh, I say probably, probably use like a phrase book. If you're going to like a new country, have one of those little phrase books. And like the first thing in there will be like, how to say where is the bathroom or like a little guidebook yeah I don't know I don't know if... plus there's the toilet symbols I feel like are pretty much universal you can just like look for them um, in my in my limited experience uh, this person says if you were a kangaroo Oh, this dramatic parrot. She says, if you were a kangaroo, what would you carry around in your pouch all the time? Uh, the first comment reply to her says, pen. Oh, excuse me. I, I'm like, that's like the third time I've burped in the last 24 minutes and 9 seconds. Uh, this first person says, pen and paper, which is what I was going to say. But I would say, like, a few of... A few, not, like a few pens and like a sketchbook to work on, you know? I like having like a sketchbook that I'm like working on to make like, to feel like I'm making progress in. Um, I obviously have like multiple sketchbooks, but I like having one main sketchbook and then like other sketchbooks I can kind of go kind of mess around in and not worry about as much. Not that I'm really worried about my main sketchbook, but I don't know, I like having options. And then there's always like, there's always loose leaf paper as well. 
obviously. It's no big deal. This person says, maybe don't talk during one hour. I spend many one hours not talking. Most of my life, well, the, to, to his credit, he did put like a winking smiley face after his comment, so I don't really know what he meant. Maybe he's being sarcastic. I don't know if he's saying I, he doesn't like when I talk for one hour, or just thinking maybe it's a good idea for people people in general to not talk for one hour, but I do spend most of my life, most of my hours, in complete silence. So, yeah. It's, I think I can get away with talking for one hour here, <laughs> Mr. Green. Um, this person didn't even give me a... Oh, I'm not going to read that one. Um, this person says, talk about your favorite cheeses. Um, my favorite cheeses, I go through stages, obviously. Um, Early in my life, I really wanted to like Swiss cheese, uh, just because that's, it looks very cool. And, uh, you know, with those circles, they're like, if in a slice of cheese, they're circles. And in a chunk of Swiss cheese, they're like spheres, they're bubbles, right? And that's very cool. Also, it's like a very uh, iconic cheese in like cartoons and stuff, you know, like if there's like a mouse in a cartoon, um, about to get stuck in a mouse trap, going after a piece of cheese. That's probably a slice of Swiss cheese in there. So I really wanted to like Swiss cheese, um, but I never really did like Swiss cheese. I kind of hated it. Um, um, early in my life, also, I really liked those just like American singles um, that were like wrapped individually. That's probably like hardly even cheese. It's probably more plastic than cheese. It's probably terrible cheese, but I enjoyed those. Um, when I was a little kid because my mom would give me one and I would entertain myself by folding the slice of cheese as many times as I could. And as I folded it, um, along the fold, the cheese would kind of tear itself and break. And I would keep folding it until instead of a, instead of a slice of cheese, I would have a, a tall stack of tiny cheese squares because they would break themselves into little squares that continued folding them. So I really liked folding my cheese squares. And then I would, then after I had a tall stack of tiny cheese squares, I would eat the cheese, tiny cheese square by tiny cheese square. And I think it might've also uh, reminded me of that uh, one scene with the mouse and the corn kernels in this Disney Cinderella music uh, movie. Um, kind of sandwiches are my favorites. I really like sandwiches with mayonnaise in them. Mayonnaise? Mayonnaise? May so every now and then I just say a word and it sounds weird to me, even though that's probably how I've been saying it my whole life. And uh, then I suddenly question my entire existence. Have I been saying it that, that way my whole life? And, I, and have I been saying it wrong? And is there a right way to say it? Um, mayonnaise, cheese, I don't really like roast beef that much, even though it's a very popular thing. I'm not a big roast beef fan. I'm a big fan of ham, and uh, I've always been a big fan of ham. I like ham a lot. Thinly sliced ham. Thickly sliced ham is okay too, but mostly thinly sliced ham. Uh, how do I fold my burrito? I don't know if I've ever folded a burrito. Maybe once. I vaguely remember that, but mostly I buy my burritos from people who fold them for me. Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience with that. If I if I was going to fold my burrito, I would probably try to do it in a way that would hold all the food inside of it until I was, you know, until I got to it. Um, this person says, that is pretty. Thank you. Peter, you forgot to sign it. You know, more and more people are commenting that, Peter, you don't sign your drawings anymore, or Peter, I can't, I've been staring at your drawing and I can't find your signature. What's up with that? To be honest, I haven't been signing my sit my drawings because I don't see the point. Um, if, if I have to sign my drawing, uh, you know, for everyone to tell that it's mine, I feel like I'm not doing the right thing anyways, right? So I feel like my whole drawing is my signature. I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know. It's like uh, if my all my art looks so identical to everyone else's, you know, that the only thing that sets it apart is my name on it. Then I don't. What's the point in drawing, anyways? 
Um, talk about my opinion on Wendy's. Wendy's is pretty good. Uh, I don't know why they're so, you know, crazy about their square patties. I think they could work on their buns a little bit. Sometimes I'm eating a hamburger and I've still got a good third of the hamburger left and I've just got a tiny sliver of bun on the top and the bottom. Just barely, barely enough to pinch it between my thumb and forefinger as I try to eat the rest of the, the hamburger. So I think they could work on the huns, make those, the buns make those a little, a little hardier. I don't know. That's just my two cents. I remember one time when Wendy's had that little, that whole fiasco about that lady who uh, found a pinky in her chili, um, which ended up being her own pinky or some pinky she brought with her, like her friend's pinky maybe. And she put it in the chili just in order to win some uh, huge lawsuit from them. But then they found out, like, how, why wouldn't they? Like, you can tell where pinkies come from, right? That's not that difficult to figure out. Um, and uh, anyways, so obviously it was a huge PR nightmare for Wendy's, regardless of where the pinky came from or who put it in the chili. And so Wendy's was doing this promotional thing where, like this one Friday night, they were giving out free Junior Frosties. And so me and my friend and my other friend and my other friend, I think there were four of us, excuse me again, uh, we were all in his, uh, my one friend's VW bus. And uh, I think we hit about four or five Wendy's. And you could go in and just ask for a free Junior Frosty and they would give it to you. But here's the thing. You could ask for more than one free junior frosty. And so uh, you could ask for two. You could ask for for seven free junior frosties. And they would just give you seven free junior frosties. And so and I think at one time I even asked one of the cashiers or the waitress. I guess the cashier at a Wendy's, whatever. I asked one of the people working there. I was like, so how many can I have? And she said, well, as many as you want. And then she said, well, within reason. Anyway, so I would go in and I would ask for like seven or eight free Junior Frosties. And my friend would come in and I'd be asking at the other register. And then my other friend would come in and ask. And then my other friend would go through the drive through And I think by the time we were done that night, we had like a stack of cups of like, like probably a good 70 free Junior Frosty cups. Um, that was a good night. That was a good night. So Wendy's did us a solid. I think I like Wendy's just because I got 70. Well, the four of us got 70 free Junior Frosties. They were only chocolate, though. I think I might like vanilla ones better. Uh, shoe shopping. Uh, shoe shopping's weird. I do a lot of sh some a lot of shoe shopping online. Uh, I do a lot of shopping on, in general online. Um, just because I'm, you know good old-fashioned recluse but uh some of my favorite shoes one time I bought I was just like I was in downtown Chicago and it was like slush on the ground you know like melting snow and uh and I realized I had there were some I had worn some holes in the bottom of my shoes so I just like walked into a random store um, by the street on the street I was on I think it turned out to be Macy's or something on like uh, State Street or something downtown Chicago and I just like grabbed a random pair of boots off the shelf and bought them and they turned out to be like the favorite pair of boots I've ever bought and uh I wore the label right off of them and I don't really know what brand they are but I could probably figure it out if I really wanted to I really need to buy some new ones and I want to buy the same brand as those because I liked them so much uh but because I recently kind of ruined them because I I went to I went to the beach and I kind of stood too close to the water and like the salt water kind of washed up over and there's like a bunch of weird salt and stuff inside the boots now. And I'm not sure. Should I just like throw them in the wash? I've had bad things happen to shoes before when I threw them in the washing machine and or the dryer. So I'm not sure if I should just like rinse them out in the tub to get the salt and sand out or or what. But they're pretty gross right now. And I wish I could wear them again. I've got them to a point where, you know... A lot of things look a lot cooler when they're kind of broken in and worn down a little bit. And those boots are right at that point right now. So, I don't know. I kind of like them a lot. I don't know if I want to replace them yet, but I, mean, I don't know if they're if they're totally shot. Uh, this person also, this person has three good questions. This person also wants to know, 
about the difference between fried and scrambled eggs. This one also reaches back into my childhood where I definitely liked, I was definitely more a fan of scrambled eggs for my entire childhood. I thought fried eggs uh, were disgusting, you know? Like that you could fry them and then like they were like half uncooked and there was all this weird goopy yellow stuff and even white and clear stuff and it was just you'd like poke them and it all comes seeping out and it was gross and I'm like cook the eggs mix it all together I want it to be at least kind of solid just scramble it you know scramble it chop up some ham throw it in there and uh maybe even maybe even put some green food coloring in there and uh make Dr. Seuss happy with some green eggs and ham I always love when my mom did that always loved that but now I I don't I definitely like fried eggs you know over easy maybe over medium depending on who's cooking them definitely a big fan of fried eggs now and uh because you know you can like with whatever else you're eating whether it's like hash browns or toast or whatever you can like poke the egg and get all the eggy stuff all over whatever else you're eating and mix it all together and it's delicious uh big fan of eggs in a basket too you know where you you punch out the middle of a piece of bread and cook the egg in the middle of the piece of bread fry it in there you know um this person says talk about pine cones she says or he says sorry it looks like a dude in the profile picture plus it says dog the last part of the name is dog it says talk about pine cones i think they're important but they can also pass as semi-important, I think. Well, when it comes to pine cones, I can definitely understand why you think they're important. And I'm sure that pine cones certainly think that they are important. And that's understandable because, um, you know, most things probably, you know, it's all a matter of perspective. And when it comes to, you know, growing more pine trees, uh, pine cones are extremely important. Um, what I think is weird is how often you see pine cones just randomly inside people's houses, just as like decorations. Um, I guess they look cool. I guess they do. And uh, the one thing I can appreciate about pine cones, you know, is those, it's just like the cool pattern, you know, that mathematical spiral. I'm sure you've all seen like that Vihart, however you say her name, Vihart video, you know, there's probably some, I don't remember what it's called, the golden ratio or no, that's not it. So there's some some weird thing about how, you know, math, numbers, patterns, etc. govern all of nature and it's everywhere about how all the, you know, the way a spiral and a pine cone and I don't, you know, flower petals work, etc. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like, I like pine cones for that reason, but I've had bad experiences with them, uh, you know, running around barefoot playing sports or tag or whatever when I was little and stepping on pine cones. That's a painful experience. So I'm not a big fan of them in that regard. Okay. So pine cones, they're important in their own sphere of the world, but uh, not terribly important in my personal life. Okay. Um, this person says, maybe you could count down the time on that video instead of thinking of something to talk about. Um, that sounds that's that's like a interesting um or mildly interesting border borderline terrible idea but i appreciate your input he put also a uh, a winky smiley face with a dash for a nose so it's not it's not every day you see with a smiley face with a nose these days i think the last time i saw one of those it was from my dad so thank you um this person says, I'm tired of my Micron fine liner smudging. I'm using Kaysen, I can only assume they meant Kansen, 60 pound multimedia paper. Do the state, oops, I bumped my desk. Do the Staedtler markers produce better performance? No, I don't think so. The only reason I started using Staedtler markers instead of Microns is because Staedtler markers have a strange texture on the outside of the pen. There's all pens are the same, pretty much. They put ink on the paper. Um, you know, people worry about this stuff too much. Like, uh, if your lines are smudging, then don't put your hand right on top of the line right after you draw it. You can blow on the paper a little bit. 
you can uh you can have a little fan going in your direction even from across the room a little bit of airflow across your paper will help your lines dry a lot faster and prevent smudging but i still smudge lines all the time um yeah i don't know exactly what what paper you're talking about i haven't memorized all the paper types you know and what they feel like and you know how ink works on them and stuff but i'm pretty sure that pretty much every pen that uses good archival ink like that is you know more or less the same you don't have to use a staler stapler pen just because i do um by any means it's not going to make you a better artist instantly or anything like that my recommendation always is to use as many different pens as you can and uh just use the ones you like that's what i did um well wow, some interesting things for sure <laughs> you know i specifically said not important things and some people wanted me to talk about important things um this person says peter if you don't mind can you drawing something different? This is, this, I am, well, I was going to say I am drawing something different, but this video is almost, exi it's an, it, it is the same thing as the last video or the way, it's whatever. Um, favorite food. Um, I think I said this before. I'm, I like probably my top three favorite foods right now are, uh, I like dumplings slash pot stickers. Uh, there's probably a thousand other names for them. I like I like chicken wings. I actually haven't had I haven't had some good hot wings almost ever since I moved to Wilmington. Before um, in the previous place I've lived, I've had like a good go-to place for hot wings, but I haven't really had them recently. Um, this actually this person said favorite food, favorite snack. Is a snack not food? I don't really understand the question why. Why those would be two different things. I guess they want to know if I would eat different things for meals and snacks. Um, this one said, this person says, what pens do you use? This person says, picking M&Ms out of trail mix. I like picking M&Ms out of trail mix and also the Chex mix. And also those little weird dark slices of like crispy, hard, rye bread or whatever those are those they're like thick black chips i love those things they don't actually like taste that good they just seem really weird and too hard or something they i think they just fascinate me um yeah a lot of people have been asking for a video where i draw with my left hand um they're like peter you've drawn with your right hand you've drawn blindfolded now you just need to draw with your left hand uh, this person says, I'm surprised he hasn't done this yet. Maybe he's scared of his left hand and all the weird lines it could make. Um, I guess, you know, maybe that is what it is deep down inside in my subconscious. I'm just afraid, but I just don't really want to. That's what it comes down to. I, in my, in my conscious, I feel like I don't want to. So that's why I haven't so far. Um, cause my left hand it kind of sucks. It doesn't do what I tell it to. Even when I'm drawing blindfolded, at least my hand is doing what I tell it to, even if I don't know where it's doing it or in what scale. Um, it's just, it just doesn't seem that fun to me. It just kind of seems like floundering about uselessly when I'm drawing with my left hand in it. And my left hand, it's like not conditioned the same way. Like it cramps up a lot faster because I'm like I don't know how to use all those muscles, you know. It's kind of a useless appendage uh, in that regard. So, I don't know. Maybe I will one day. Maybe I will use my left hand uh, for a drawing. But I'm just, I'm definitely not making any promises in that regard. The benefits of watering your salad. Um, talk about it. I've never tried watering my salad, except with, like, I do water my salad with things that aren't water, things like vinegar, vinaigrette, Caesar, uh, like a uh, Thousand Island. When I was young, Thousand Island was definitely my favorite dressing. Now I'm more of just a vanilla. I'm, I've 
I'm just more of a ranch guy now. I actually should probably eat more salads and develop more of a palate, uh, more of a flavor for salads. I'd probably become a healthier person. Um, uh, this person says, what cheese would you want to be if you could? Oh, that just makes me realize I never actually said, I never finished answering the question about uh, what cheeses I like. You guys are probably like, just wondering what cheeses I like because I never, I I do like, you know, you now know that I don't like Swiss cheese, but um, I kind of flip flop between, uh, and, and you know that I did like American, you know, quote unquote American cheese, uh, but these days, uh, I'm 25 right now, uh, I like I like I like me some pepper jack. Um, Never been a huge fan of cheddar, but I'll eat some cheddar. Like, I don't hate it, but I, I mean, it's like good cheese. But I, if I'm going to go to the store and buy cheese, I just don't buy cheddar. But if there's cheddar, I'll eat it. I just don't. That's just not, like, what I go for. You know what I mean? And uh, I also like Munster cheese. I'm not sure how to say it. Like, it's spelled like Munster. You know, M-U-E-N-S-T-E-R. And uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, probably... Pepper Jack and Munster, my two favorites at the moment. Those are pretty, pretty on point. Um, <laughs> this person says, help me, I am rubbish. Uh, well, I'm guessing, I hope they mean it, drawing. You're not rubbish, friend. You're, you're okay. Talk about why paper is white and why it's not some other color. I don't know, man. I've seen plenty of paper that wasn't white. Have you ever seen like those stacks of construction paper at the store? Have you ever seen stacks of... I think it's just a... So you can see what you put on it. I guess that wasn't really a question. It was just a thing to talk about. I shouldn't have snapped on you like... Snapped at you like that. I guess you maybe you mean because the trees it's made from isn't aren't white, but the inside of trees are whitish maybe, but they're definitely not that white. You're true. I mean you're right. You're true. I don't know why I said you're true, but that is a good. I guess they bleach it. I guess there's bleach in our paper. Don't eat paper. You'll die because they bleach. They bleach the wood. Oh no, toxic chemicals. Um, Talk about foods that have memories or places tied to them. For example, when I eat French toast, I think of mornings in my grandparents' house. Uh, French toast, yeah, I definitely think of just my parents' house. My mom never made French toast that often. Um, what other foods have memories with them? I went for about the first... Well, in the Philippines. I, I lived in the Philippines until I was about seven. And I remember there, in the front yard, we had banana plants. Had those some bananas sometimes, and there's there there were pineapple plants, but I never actually remember eating pineapples out of them very often. I feel like when we did have pineapples, we would buy them from somewhere else. Maybe they just weren't very good pineapple plants. I mean, I just don't remember very clearly. Um, what I do really love were those guava trees. There was, there were, I loved climbing the guava trees when I was little, and uh, there were one on each side of the sidewalk next to our house, and one of the guava trees was great for climbing, and one of them was just like half decent for climbing. So one of them we almost completely ignored, uh, and one of them we were in almost nonstop. And uh, we picked these guavas out of the tree, and sometimes, uh, Someone, I don't know if it was uh, my mom or, um, we had like some Filipino, like, housekeeper or something that would help us out or something. That sounds really posh or something now that I think about it, but we weren't rich. I don't know why we had a housekeeper. We, we, <laughs> that sounds weird now that I think about it. I don't know how that worked. But someone would make this, like, dipping sauce uh, for the guavas that we called Harry. Um... I don't think we call it hairy sauce. That sounds weird. Even just calling it 
Harry is weird. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Now I'm like doubting myself just because that sounds so weird, but I'm pretty sure that stuff was called Harry. And uh, I think it was almost entirely soy sauce. Um, but I feel like it had some other stuff floating around in it, maybe like soy sauce with like pepper, maybe. Um, I'm totally, I don't think I ever made it myself or asked what was in it. I just knew I liked dipping my guavas in it as I ate them. Each bite, I would I have like a little tiny cup of it or something, and I would dip each bite in the hairy. And uh, guavas, I mean, guavas are even delicious plain. I remember there was one guava tree over near my friend, my friend Jeremy's house, and the guavas in that tree were at least twice the size of every other guava uh, around. And uh, that was just amazing. That guava tree was also like twice as tall, and you had to climb really high, and you could see over on top of everyone's roofs, and it was scary and amazing, and the guavas were huge. And, uh, yeah... And I remember sometimes um, there were also mango trees and we picked mangoes out and someone would, uh, you know, mangoes have like huge pits in them, like huge, I guess pits are just seeds in the middle. And sometimes, um, you know, you just start gnawing away at them and eat them. Uh, but every time I did that, I'd have like so much stuff stuck in between my teeth afterwards. I think that was the main reason I didn't like eating them. They were just like st so stringy. It was kind of annoying. Yeah, but I don't know. I liked living in the Philippines. I only lived there when I was a really little, a really little kid, so I only have good memories. And uh, I remember one time we were really happy to find these bushes over near someone's house. For some reason, somehow, we got wind that the bushes on these leaves, I mean the leaves on these bushes, uh, were uh, entirely edible. And so uh, I think we spent a good hour two hours just eating the leaves off these bushes uh, just because we could just because that seemed incredible that we could just eat the leaves they just tasted like leaves I think maybe someone <laughs> maybe someone was just pulling our leg and we were just eating random leaves off random bushes but uh, <laughs> now that I, now that I think about it it's pretty amazing uh, uh, wow Oops, about my desk again. And I remember there were a lot of gullies there, kind of scattered about everywhere. Like, I don't know if you know what a gully is, but kind of like a huge, like a big dip, like a huge, like a little, like a, a little valley, a huge ditch, uh, but like a ravine kind of, big jungly ravine. And we would go down and cross those as, uh, kind of like shortcut shortcuts that only kid kids was you I can't even talk anymore only that that only kids would use because there's like a pretty good chance that you could like get dirty or you know there were just like a couple of boards laid across the water at the bottom of the gully it was there were not like good paths or whatever and we would go through these gullies as shortcuts to get to and from uh, school I only ever went to kindergarten there but I remember a couple we would, there were we had like a few good vines even. Uh, that we knew were good to hang on to, and we would swing across some of the gullies. And one time, my friend got stung by a bee there, and I never got stung by bees there or anywhere really until I was like in my teenage years. I had never gotten stung by a bee in my whole life, um, but everyone I knew kept getting stung by bees and wasps and hornets. And I remember our screen door in our front house, the handle, the knob on the screen door was actually like a spool from like a spool of thread. So it had like these little holes in the front of it. And there was like some mud daubers, like some wasps living in the holes of the spool of the spool of the handle of the screen door. And I'm pretty sure my sister got stung by the wasp once. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. I think she just put her thumb over it though on purpose. I think she I think she had it coming, so and then we had like all these cats and these little kittens and we had the screen door of course because there's bugs everywhere you gotta have a screen door and sometimes we'd sit in they were, they were only outside cats they would never come inside and sometimes the little kittens would be out on the front porch and they would like jump up on the screen door and latch onto the screen with their little claws and we would sit inside we would just me and my sister would just sit cross-legged 
inside on the other side of the screen door with a little squirt bottle of water and squirt them in the face as they jumped up on the screen door, uh, you know, to teach them a lesson so they wouldn't ruin the screen door. I think I think I enjoyed that a lot. And because once you squirted water on the screen door, the water would get stuck in the little squares of the screen and leave cool patterns. That was fun. I think there's pictures of me doing that, just sitting there in my underwear, maybe even a diaper when I was really young. Yeah, I like those cats a lot. I remember one time, like a whole litter of the cats were born blind. My dad drowned them while I was at school to put them out of their misery or something. I think that devastated me for like half an hour and my sister for like half a week or a month. I don't know, there might have been more to it than that. It sounds pretty brutal. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I guess blind cats wouldn't have made it very far out there in the in the wild tropics anyways yeah and then on on the walls i remember out there we had like a little we had our laundry out there like the the you know, like a washer and drying machine and there were all, always always so many geckos on the walls and i would try to catch them but those things were so fast i don't think i caught i probably spent a, a lot of time chasing geckos on the walls and i, I probably caught less than 10 percent of them but when i did catch them and probably the ones I did try to catch, I probably ended up accidentally like pulling their tails off half the time too, and then just holding their tails and watching their tails twitch between my fingers, and then feeling bad for a second, and then knowing that their tails would grow back, because I knew that was really cool, but then also feeling bad because I'd also still just pulled off their tail, I knew that must be excruciating, and then knowing that I should probably be more careful in my catching attempts, but still probably doing the same thing the next time. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, we're drawing to the end of this real time video. Uh, some news for the future. Excuse me, that's my fifth burp. I think. I hope I hope you'll excuse me. Uh, some news for the future. Uh, keep hitting me up with ideas of what to talk about. You guys are great at ideas of uh, very low-key things to talk about. And I uh, have a new book coming out soon, Peter's Line Almanac. You can already buy the ebook on my website, like the PDF version, if you want a little preview. Um, but that should be up in a few days even. If you wait a few days to watch this video, it might already be on Amazon. Time is a weird weird thing how it keeps moving forward and some things stay stuck in stuck in one spot in it um i don't know I, einstein probably understands that stuff better than i do uh but yeah anyways uh thanks for watching guys you're all you my fans you're all very very encouraging sometimes there are like if, sometimes it's weird there's like 100 two there's hundreds of positive uplifting encouraging comments on a video and then sometimes it'll be like one mildly annoying uh discouraging comment and i'll like mentally like that that'll be like the only one i remember that'll be the only one i like latch on to but uh i don't know it's like some weird psychological thing but i just want to thank you guys for being so awesome and uh just so cool and uh encouraging to me it it's a uh, you know I'm glad when I hear I'm encouraging you guys, it encourages me too. So, yeah, that's why I keep, uh, it's one of the main reasons at least why I keep drawing and posting it on the internet because uh, you guys seem to enjoy it. Uh, so, anyways, that's all for today and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.